Hi everyone and welcome. Let's talk about money, specifically money when it comes to AWS. Maybe you got an email like this that says, hey, you've got a bill, here's the total amount. Hopefully the bill is not a surprise or the amount is not a surprise, but sometimes it is, or sometimes you just need to know more details behind the charges. You can always open the bill by clicking on the link in the email, but I wanna show you more generally how to get to your bills and what they mean. So out here in the AWS console, come up to the top right, and then click on billing dashboard. You will need to be using your root account to get to all of these billing details. So FYI there. Here on the dashboard, as you would expect, you get kind of at a glance what's going on with your account, where the highest costs are coming from, trends and so forth. But we wanna to go to the bills specifically. So over here on the left, bills. And then that bill that I was showing you for roughly $40, that was a few months ago. So you can always change the dates up here. I'm gonna to backtrack to 2022 and November for that particular bill. And here was my grand total big spender here. The highest cost by service provider, I was doing a lot with SageMaker that month. So that's where most of my charges are coming from. And then down here, you get a further breakdown. They've actually recently updated this experience and I really like what they've done here. So I can see for SageMaker, I had usage in two different regions, so US East Ohio, and then I get a nice detailed breakdown of exactly what those charges were. I was using SageMaker Canvas, I was running some instances, I had storage, and then in US West Oregon, I had some usage, but this was all free. So I've got a $0 charge for that. And then I also had some charges for Route 53, it looks like, a global service, 50 whole cents there. And then a little bit for AWS Config as well. And then these other services I was using, but I was in the free tier or there weren't any charges. Yours will obviously look different than mine, but you will see things on here even if the charges are zero. And then of course we have tax as well, always a given. So hopefully this gives you what you need, but you can also use Cost Explorer to explore your costs a little bit more, dig a little bit deeper if you need those details. The first time you come into Cost Explorer, if you haven't used it before, you'll need to enable it and then it can take up to 24 hours for data to show. But once that's happening, you can just say view in Cost Explorer. This interface has also been updated fairly recently, so it might look different if you've used this before. But over here on the right, I can change my date range. So if we go back to the November bill that I was looking at before, We'll apply that. You can change granularity. So maybe if you were looking across an entire year, you would want that to display by month instead of day. You can also get hourly if you really need to get granular, but I'll stick with day here. And then over here, obviously you see the costs and then just a single line for total costs here. And this might be all you need, but most likely you need a further breakdown. So I'll show you how to do that, but you can mouse over these things here. It'll give you the cost, the date, and so on. And then down here at the bottom, because we're just looking at the one month, we have a daily view. To get a little bit more detail, I typically will come and group by service to start and just see if that gets me what I need. So SageMaker obviously, again, was my largest charge. I've got a few other things here as well, and they're color coded with the legend there. And then scrolling down, you'll get the breakdown here as well. But sometimes that doesn't quite give you enough. SageMaker, for example, has all sorts of different kinds of charges that can accrue and other services as well. This isn't meant to be a lesson about SageMaker charges, but that's just what I had on my bill. So if we come over here to group by and change this to usage type, this is another way to kind of slice and dice. And I find this most helpful usually as I'm trying to track down what a charge is. So rather than just seeing SageMaker on this particular day, I can see that Canvas had the largest charge here of $30 for a model request, and then I had some session hours as well. So just an additional breakdown. You can also filter over here. So maybe you were running things across multiple regions and you only want to include a specific region or exclude specific regions. Maybe you're trying to track down different EC2 instance types or charges. So you can filter here by those. Also importantly, make sure your charge type is correct. You might have credits that you got from AWS for some reason. Here we're excluding those, but if you wanna see the usage, even though the cost was zero, then make sure you don't exclude those. That's a common gotcha as people are looking at Cost Explorer and their bill is whether they're including credits or not. So just a heads up there. 
Lots of additional filters here as well, availability zones, platforms, and so on. But that's it in a nutshell, the basics of understanding your bill and how to dig deeper using Cost Explorer. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and also check out the other AWS videos that I have on the channel and consider subscribing for more in the future. Thanks so much for watching.